Hey guys, it's Ethan. Today I want to do a quick video talking about the different uh, graphics devices that you can use on virtual machines uh, in Vert Manager and a uh, special virtual box uh, look over as well for their graphics. So the first thing I want to cover are the four that I'm going to look at, which is uh, BOCHS, which I believe is pronounced a box, QXL, VGA, Vert IO, and I'm going to talk about RAM FB, but I won't be showcasing it. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at um, some pages here. I want to first look at box display. And this is overt.org, and I'll be linking this in the description so you can read up on it on yourself. This is just about all the documentation I could find, but the important part is that the box display device is a simple display device, which is similar to VGA but without legacy emulation. So that's the majority of uh, what it's for. It's just a basic just to get a display working, but it doesn't work with legacy emulation. So for example, this is an Ubuntu VM right here, and I'll go ahead and log in. This is with the uh, box display device. Uh, you can see already, it doesn't take a keen eye to tell that this is not a very smooth graphical display, right? It's very choppy. There aren't really any animations that don't tear. And if we open up a terminal, and type in GLX gears you'll see that this is not a very smooth looking system right I'll move this out of the way so you can see the frame rate uh, you can see that the cursor kind of snaps when anything is updating on the screen or not snaps but blinks so this is really just not this is not what you want to prioritize uh, the reason that you would use this is say for an operating system like Temple OS except not legacy I believe Temple OS is only legacy, which is why this would not be for Temple OS, but yeah, that's what this is generally for. Now let's take a look at VGA so we can cover the last of the subpar graphics devices. So VGA is basically the same. You can see it's very snappy. I will say that the cursor feels slightly more responsive, but that isn't really something that you want to judge your decision on because again, not really any animations without tearing. Cursor is very blinky, and if we open up a terminal, I believe I actually have to install it on this machine. Uh, Mesa Utils. Oh, it's already here. The GLX Gears, again, is just not, it does not showcase proper uh, acceleration. And I believe actually, if we type in GLX info and we grep for LLVM yeah it's using LLVM pipe which basically means that we're software rendering which is to be expected but this is that that's the majority of what these are and again this is what you'd use for something like Temple OS for example an operating system that doesn't have many like really any modern support maybe something like Windows XP you would use it for now we're going to take a look at the two main ones that you're going to be using for the most part. We have Ubuntu and Vert IO. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is Vert IO, yeah, okay. So Vert IO is pretty decent, I would say. It still lacks the smooth animations that you'd hope for. So you can see that it's still it has a little bit of choppiness around the sides when you do anything with it. The cursor is very smooth since it's using the host's cursor. And if we open up a terminal and we type in GLX gears, you can see that it actually isn't terrible. It it's not perfect and it definitely needs it definitely would benefit from uh, hardware rendering, but it's for the most part usable. I would say that if you wanted a virtual machine, you could use this for it. Now, what is Vert IO for? Well, first of all, Vert IO is the uh, what I believe everyone kind of pairs it with VFIO. It's very um, it's a more advanced set of input. So you could, for example, if I showed you here have a Vert IO keyboard and tablet. It's just a more advanced uh, one. But it also supports 3D acceleration. You just have to check this on, and of course I won't be able to apply this. And if you go to Display Spice, you need to check on OpenGL, select your card, 
turn listen type to none and then you would apply it. Now let me just say as a disclaimer that NVIDIA GPUs from what I could test cannot use 3D acceleration and I'm gonna have to guess that that's because of the proprietary NVIDIA driver. I've only heard of this working on um, AMD GPUs and integrated or I guess they don't always have to be integrated but Intel's uh, GPUs as well but I've never seen it work on NVIDIA and that's just a problem that everyone seems to have and that's specifically with Spice the GTK um, kind of like when you open up QEMU you can choose SDL or GTK it seems to be a problem with the GTK side of things so we're gonna go ahead and close out this VM now we're gonna take a look at the final one inside of Vert Manager which is QXL which is what I'm gonna say is the best choice for anybody who just wants a working VM in good performance so QXL is the default one built into Spice and the first thing that you'll notice is that the 3D animations work see on the top left over here there isn't any kind of tearing or snapping uh, and while the refresh rate of the actual animations is 60 Hertz there isn't any noticeable tearing and if we open up a terminal now and we type in GLX gears uh, I guess this just does not have it installed either let's go ahead and install that open up GLX gears you can see that it's actually pretty smooth and everything is flowing and the FPS of course is way higher than it should be it should be with the refresh rate from what I know and GLX info if we grep for LLVM it's still software rendered but for the most part I say this is probably the best software rendering that you're gonna get inside of vert manager through QEMU and this is what I would recommend the most now let's take a look at one more alternative and I'm first gonna show you why we're not talking about RAM FB and this was the most documentation I can find and again I'm gonna be sending this uh, I'll place this in the description so you can read up on it yourself but more or less for a arch 64 hosts <clears throat> for whatever reason because again I don't work with anything other than x86 64 like AMD 64 it seems to work better without display corruption through uh, QEMU so for an ARM system or ARCH64, I don't really know the differences here, so I'm not going to speak about what's what and what's better. It seems that RAM FB is for that purpose, which is why we're not touching it. Now the final thing I wanted to show you is the VirtualBox VM. And you're probably wondering, hey, how did you get VirtualBox inside of QEMU? And let me go ahead and show you. Let's expand this terminal. So if you look at the EIX for libvirt, and specifically the use flags, you'll see that one of the use flags that you can enable is VirtualBox. So if you compile libvirt with VirtualBox, you'll now be able to basically integrate your VirtualBox VMs into uh, libvirt to manage them. And you have to add the session, which you can copy from right here. It's called vbox user session. And how do you add this? If you go to file, add connection and when you put in the custom URI you're going to set this to vbox colon slash 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 session and you want it to be session not system now what can we do with this exactly and I'm gonna say right now not much so already the XML is very different from what you might be used to there's new model types the settings seem to be transferred over from VirtualBox, but you can't actually change them. If I wanted to change the core count, I just can't change the VM. And if I want to start it, again, I can't really do that either. The only thing that you can really do is open up VirtualBox itself, and then you can start the VM. So there isn't really any point, but uh, oh, I should mention actually that you have to close all of your uh, vert manager or libvert QEMU VMs before you can use a uh, virtual box one which is also something that's annoying so if we go ahead and start this one up and I'm gonna put this in is it scaled mode I'm not too sure we'll see when it boots up you'll see that it's so it's running here and you can't really see any information about it none of these bars light up 
you can't you can't view it through the uh, vert manager window either so more or less you're just using VirtualBox I don't see the point in integrating it so uh, what graphics are available for vert manager or for uh, VirtualBox sorry again it has 3d acceleration that works pretty all right I'd say QXL slightly uh, beats it in this regard because this is a little bit slower and it also requires that you install the guest editions to get any sort of proper graphics working besides that you can't set the resolution nor does the resolution set itself automatically you can see that it's kind of buggy and it doesn't really work properly uh, but if we open up a terminal now and we type in GLX gears it seems that it kind of works this is what it's supposed to do it's supposed to sync to the refresh rate of the screen and let me go ahead and expand this window so it is doing what it's supposed to in that regard it is 60 fps here and it feels like it's 60 fps so it feels good all around but again it does have its flaws like if i wanted to go to the settings and change the display resolution I can't choose my actual resolution and it doesn't auto do itself. I think scaled mode might actually do it. No, not not at all. Not even close. But yeah, overall, I'd say that VirtualBox is not is not the play either. I wouldn't use VirtualBox personally. So now it's time to say what's the definitive winner? Like what should you use? if you're just setting up a VM through Vert Manager and you want good graphics. Well, if you're looking for a uh, looking glass sort of thing, which if you know what that software is, if you're looking for a just a window that opens up and you can look at the VM, then QXL is the clear winner here since it requires nearly no configuration. You just boot it up and hit start and everything seems to work about as good as it can. But if you want a real winner, the best possible graphics you can get in a VM, and you know that I'm a big advocate for, um, what do you call it, GPU pass-through. And I have a little VFIO template right here for when I make my VMs. So I, I would say, go ahead and just pass through your graphics cards, and you'd get the best possible experience on a virtual machine. But again that's not exactly the focus of this video because you you're mostly looking for just a vm that opens up as a window so yeah qxl is definitely the winner in this regard so with that being said thank you for watching i'm not sure if this was a helpful video or anything that you were interested in but i thought it was important to look over the options that we have when it comes to setting up a virtual machine especially graphics wise and what each of them looks like does and which one you should use if this video helped you or you enjoyed it at all, leave it a like. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments or join my Discord and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Anyways, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.